Uh, I'm here with uh, Justin Redlatch, and this is my fourth interview in my little series. And we're going to talk about starting out as a songwriter, but also about the life as a songwriter, what what your week look like, looks like, or daily life, things like that. Yeah. So thanks be fun. for being here. My pleasure. Thanks <laughs> for coming over. I'm usually here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> doing this. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, to start with, um, you've been in, in the songwriting business for a long time, right? Uh, for about, I guess, professionally, for about eight years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, how did it start? Well, it started um, in high school. I guess I wrote my first couple songs. Yeah. Because I, uh, I learned to play guitar because I was hearing these melodies in my head. Yeah. Right, and they were just kind of coming to me pretty easily, and I didn't know how to play an instrument, so I picked up the guitar and I just got a friend to teach me a few chords, and that way I could, you know, put these melodies to music. Yeah. And um, I kept writing songs in high school, I had a couple bands, and then I went to university and didn't really think about becoming a songwriter. I wanted to actually become a writer. Mm. Um, so after my third year of university, I had recorded maybe one or two small albums, just shitty stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I said I wanted to, I was about 22 or 23 at the time, I'm 32 now. And uh, you know, I said to myself, I want to take a year off of university and record an album that I'm happy with. You know, just, I want to do that now at the time, you know, when I was 23. I didn't want to wait till I was finished yeah. my university courses and all my degree, you know, because I thought it would it'd be too late, you know, I'd be too old at 26, <laughs> you know. So I took a year off and spent that year recording my, what would become my, my first album, mm -hmm. you know, my first real album. And, um, I'd play as many shows as I could, go to as many open mics as I could, yeah. you know. Um, and when I finished the record, but halfway through, well, halfway through making the record, I met a guy from England um, at this bar I worked at, and uh, he said he was starting up a little label. Hmm. And so I sent him. I said, "Well, I'm recording this record." It's kind of a weird story, you know. It's 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 kind of from like kind of from a movie or something like yeah. that. He said, "Well, I'm starting up a little record label." And so I gave him what I was working on, and um, he eventually released it in the UK, Good. and it got some really great reviews in uh, Uncut and NME and um, Mojo and magazines like that, yeah. like big magazines, and um, some promoters heard it. So actually, I, my first round of success was in England, yeah. which was really strange. <laughs> so I take it, I, I had taken a year off school. Um, and all of a sudden I'm getting, um, sort of, uh, rec recognition yeah. for this, and which was very strange because, you know, you think of, you know, as a songwriter, you, it's a very insular kind of process and you don't really know if what you're doing is any good. Yeah. You know, oh, it's yeah, like, it's know. Just, you play it for your friends, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and of course they're going to say it's good, but you don't, you know, when you're starting out, you don't know anyone. Even in yeah. your city, I mean, how you don't really know anyone, any real professionals or anything like that. So you just do it yourself and and you hope it's good, right? Yeah. So um, that was kind of the way it, it worked for me. And then I signed to a label in England and signed to a label in Canada. And then I, I just kept wow. going from there. I never, yeah. went, never made it back to university. <laughs> So when you took the year off, you didn't really know yet that you wanted to do this, right? So no. it just happened. I didn't think it could. Wow. I didn't think that it was possible. Yeah. To make a living writing songs. I did not think it was possible because everyone will tell you you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like really, you know, your everyone, your parents, your you know, your friends. It's like everyone at school. It's like, yeah, I want to be a songwriter. Really. Yeah. So it's just, it's just kind of ingrained in you that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so when I took a year off school to record an album, that was it. I just wanted to take a year off to record an album that I was happy with. 
Just I wanted to do my best, yeah. work, you know, work as much as I could, pay for it, I paid for it all myself, and did the best job that I could. Yeah. And, uh... Um, that's great. And that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just the way it worked, you know? So, I mean, it, it's really, I think it's really important as a song, as, like, an emerging songwriter, for emerging songwriters, to really believe in what they do, even though they could be told by everyone they know that it's not a viable path yeah. to make a living for them, you know. Um, so that was how it started for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, you, do you think there is a way of um, kind of forcing yourself into a path like that? Like how, how would you say um, aspiring songwriters would uh, should uh, approach that path? Is there do you have tips for for um, meeting people mm -hmm. that you want to meet as a inspiring Absolutely. Um, my advice would be to go. <laughs> you're gonna like this. To to go out as much as you can. Yeah. To go to as many shows as you can. And and er, and you know what I used to do is I was really into bluegrass and country mm -hmm. music and rock and roll. Yeah. So I would, every Wednesday I would be out at the local bluegrass club, I would follow these musicians around. Yeah. You know, I mean, be at their gigs, get to know them, you know, um, take less, I was taking, I took lessons from, I took banjo lessons, I took mm. dobro lessons, I took guitar <laughs> lessons, you know, yeah. just to get to know these people. And also because I was obviously interested yeah. in learning. But... You know, I was out at the bars every night, drinking my face off, talking, <laughs> talking to people, yeah, and you know, getting to know who's, you know, who's that guy, who's that guy, who's that guy, yeah, and eventually, you know, just through meeting these people, you start to, it, it's very gradual, but you know, you start to, 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 to meet these people who are relevant. Yeah. In either the music industry or in you songwriting. You kind of force yourself into that little circle. Absolutely. Have, yeah. Absolutely, and it's all about being present. I, I know a lot of a lot of songwriters who sit down and write. Yeah. You know, but I, I I haven't been able to do that. I can, but it's I'm not very happy with the results. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm working on my own stuff. Um, I tend to, I'm kind of constantly working on material. Mm -hmm. So I have an o I have sort of an office here that I use to write, but I'll generally generally work on about between five and ten songs at a time. Mm. So I've always got something on the go because I get uh, I get frustrated easily. And it seems to have gotten worse, you know, I mean uh. I could kind of when I was you know, when I was writing my first couple of records it was a little easier. I was a little more into it, but now it's uh, it's a little more difficult because you know, as you grow, you become more professional and critical yeah. of your own work, right? Yeah. So you know, it, it takes. I think it takes longer um, yeah. because you want the product to be better. You want yeah. to write a better song. Makes sense. So. You know, I I just kind of sit and I, I but I I'm not just writing songs here. I write songs when I'm on walks. I write songs in the car. Yeah. I write songs on planes. You know, it's just I'm always I always have a melody in my head. Mm -hmm. And I find that really helps. You know, when like anywhere you are with songwriting, you can you can write a song anywhere. You know, people are always it's it's very natural. We're human beings. You know, it's, we're always humming to ourselves. Yeah. We're always singing a song. It doesn't require us to be at a desk in the at a studio. We can write songs anywhere. Yeah. Which is a nice nice feeling, you know. So, so it starts cool. with a melody for you, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never. I've, well, not never, but you don't hear that a lot. Many many people. Well, I I personally start with uh, lyrics right. almost any time. And then you adapt those to. Yeah. So I well, I, when I have a lyric, I just start playing my guitar, mm -hmm. mostly my guitar, sometimes piano, mm -hmm. 
and sometimes it will connect and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I always hope for that connection as well and just try to try stuff out on the guitar or something. Mm -hmm. I don't hear a lot of people that start with a melody and then yeah. like try to find words or... Well, to me, the, the reason I do that is because I find the melody is the most memorable. Yeah. Personally, I think the melody is, is unfortunately, not a lot of people listen to words mm -hmm. much, right? And I, you know, I, um, I study poetry at university, mm -hmm. right? So I have a very high regard for that, but I think in songwriting, melody is what sticks in people's heads. Yeah. You know, that. so... That's why I always start with the melody because um, I'd like to make the more I'd like to make the mem melody the most as memorable as possible. Yeah. Oh. So um, and then you know if the melody is I know what I have to work with lyrically. Yeah. I have to I have to work with you know I have to work with those syllables. Yeah. With that amount of time and space, you know it's it's. Yeah. The lyrics for me take the longest. Yeah. So. Because you're probably very critical because of your poetry background. I that's I would that's say. Why. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good. Cool. Good observation. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. <laughs> so. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're just wandering around searching for melodies or searching yeah. for. It, that's true. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Sounds like a great life. <laughs> um, well, I do other things. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, but it's hard, you know. I mean, it's it's. I do I do co-writing as well. Yeah. I have a co-publishing deal with EMI, so I go down to Los Angeles quite often, oh. and I write with people down there. I have another band down there, <laughs> so there's three other writers that I work with, cool. and then, you know, I'm I. I'm going down in March to Los Angeles to for about ten days of just co-writing, cool. you know. So just one on one. Yeah. And uh, that's Those a great are great weeks. They sure are. You really get into that. Great. Absolutely, effort. and you know Los Angeles is a great place to do it. It's it's kind of all the rumors are true, you know. It's the musicians are fantastic. The uh, writers are amazing. Everyone has a studio. Yeah. You can really, the work ethic is good. You can really get work done. People are nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. There was one question that one of my friends um, uh, asked me. Yeah. Uh, because I, um, I put a, a message on, on our school's Facebook to ask if anyone of my fellow students had any questions they would like me to ask. Mm -hmm. And there was one I really liked, and that's um, which of the following makes you happiest, and why? Uh, writing and finishing a song, mm -hmm. or hearing the master track after it's been recorded, or playing it in front of an audience and hearing their appreciation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a tough one. I mm -hmm. think the um, maybe recording it. Because even though you know you play it in front of an audience, writing it's like whatever you don't know. Really, <laughs> I don't know personally, it it feels good, but when you play it in front of an audience, there's a you can kind of get that immediate um, you know reaction. Yeah. Like, is it good or is it bad? Yeah. You know? So, um, but but recording it. You can just hear the finished product, and you know mm -hmm. if it's good or not. You know, you get that yeah. Uh, like, yeah, we did a good job. Yeah. You know, and I, even even in the studio of recording the beds, like not even the finished master or anything, but just laying it down in the studio, you kind of sit back and listen to it after a few takes, and you go, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm, it's it's good. It's good. Yeah. So uh, that's personally. The studio is where I, I get the most satisfaction. Um, You're the first one that says that. Yeah? I mean, yeah. Oh, I love, I, I'm pretty easy in the studio. Like, I don't, it's not a big deal for me. Not, yeah. not because I've done it a lot, but it's just, uh, 
it's become a really comfortable place. Yeah. That's good. And I, you know, I mean, playing a new song in front of an audience, a new song that the audience doesn't know, you know, people want to hear stuff they know. Yeah. That's what I think, right? So, yeah. you know, I always, when I go to a show to see, you know, when I go to see one of my favorite bands play, mm -hmm. I don't want to hear their new stuff. I want to hear the stuff I know, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I love, the, I love the studio. Yeah. Because it's an enclosed, safe space where you and your band mm -hmm. and your friends yeah and you know just take your time i what i've learned is first of all i've learned to try to do everything live mm -hmm. in the studio the tracking is, is just too it's, it's kind of a waste of money you know, if you go in, you lay down the drums to a click track, and you play a song, and you get a bass player in and play on that. It's it's a waste of your money. So you do it all together. You're all together. Oh, great. You're all at once. I mean, I just think I did my first record layer, mm -hmm. like drums, bass, blah blah blah, and then my last three records have all been live. Yeah. And that's the way we work in that in Los Angeles with my band. Too. Yeah. It's, it's all live. That's where you get the energy, that's where, and that, that's where you, you get, get fixed it. Together. That's where yeah. you get the feeling, that's where you get, you know, and if, you know, because if you're tracking, you know, you get your a guitar player to come in and play a song, and then you realize that you've done it wrong. You've recorded, oh, this spot here, Yeah. you know, it takes so long, right? It might yeah. take, like, I don't know, <laughs> depends on how, how fast you work, but, like, if you realize halfway through tracking that you've recorded it improperly, you know, yeah. Whereas if you do it live in the studio, you can fix it right away. I think I'm out of questions. Good. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks like a lot. We're, we'll go on to the tip of the day. My name is Justin Rutledge, and I'm here with your tip of the day. Um, I find the most valuable um, tool in uh, songwriting when I'm writing a song personally is the use of space in a song, um, melodically or lyrically, um, I wouldn't feel compelled, don't feel compelled to fill up the song with too many words or too much melody. Let the song breathe, you know, don't be afraid of moments of silence, of, you know, of, of you not singing or, or saying anything because the audience and the listener, they need that space too. So as much as I love words, um, don't fill up your songs with too many words. It gets confusing. Here you are with my tip of the day. Thank you.